This morning, I want to just talk to us very briefly on, uh, remind us about God, our covenant healer. Just to remind us that the God we serve is covenant healer. Our God is a covenant God. And, and we've, we've done that. We've studied his word uh, to understand that God is a God of covenant. Uh, why does God make covenant? The purpose of covenant is to bring us into relationship with him. And eventually bring us to a place of intimacy or a closeness, a close relationship with him. God established a covenant with Abraham and eventually Abraham was known as the friend of God. The Bible tells us that the highest form of covenant is the blood covenant because the blood represents life. When you make a blood covenant, a blood covenant simply means it's life for life. The two parties are covenanting life, blood covenant. So the blood covenant is the highest form of covenant and God, our God, establishes blood covenant. So we all know some of the blood covenants in the Bible and I just remind us of that. So God made a blood covenant with Abraham. We see the same thing happen with the people of Israel. We know this. He brought them out of Egypt and that night was a very important night uh, when they cut the Passover lamb. They applied the blood of the Passover lamb to the doorposts of their house and they ate the lamb. In some ways signifying, speaking of Christ himself. Because in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, 5, 6, Paul says, Christ of a Passover was sacrificed for us. God revealed himself by covenant names to his people. Now the word Jehovah is God's covenant name. Or we refer to it as a covenant title because along with that we have many Jehovah titles. But that name Jehovah simply means it, it is referring to the eternal, self-existent, unchangeable one who keeps his promise, who keeps covenant. That's Jehovah. And he said, I am Jehovah Rapha, covenant healer. That's your God. That means he's promised to be your healer to such a measure to such a degree where he said no disease will come near you when the Lord Jesus ministered on the earth he did come to bring in a new covenant but until his death and resurrection the new covenant did not come into effect so prior to his death and resurrection, the Lord Jesus ministered under the old covenant. So all the people that he was ministering to, he was ministering to them on the basis of the old covenant. Luke 13, it's about this woman who had been bent over for 18 years. That particular Sabbath, Jesus was there. He saw this woman and he said, Hey, she is a daughter of Abraham. So what did Jesus do? He released her. He said, Satan has bound her and she has a right to be loosed from this bond. She is a daughter of Abraham. And that moment he said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And what held her for 18 years left her and she became straight. Now this happened under the old covenant. But we all know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood and he was resurrected and he ascended into heaven. He put in place a new covenant. That is also a blood covenant. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, the Bible says, so much more he has established a better covenant on better promises. That means the covenant that you and I have today with Almighty God is a covenant that is better than the old covenant. If under the old covenant, healing and deliverance was so available for the people of God, covenant people how much more is healing and deliverance available for you and me people in the new covenant
sins. I just want us to understand that our God is covenant healer. And today, as part of your covenant with God, as part of our covenant with God, healing and deliverance is ours. And by faith, we're going to receive. Amen.